It is astonishing that we have never successfully filmed Andy shooting a deer. When it comes to deer stalking, the last person I really need to take along is you, Dougie, because we never have any luck. We've certainly put in the hours. I lost count after 100. High seats, stalking, mornings, evenings, some we've shown. Others have not seen the light of YouTube. Cut. What makes it even more frustrating is his farm is a honeypot for large herbivores. Feel the weed here that we haven't cut, everything else is cut around. There's quite a lot of deer been coming to it, except for tonight, I suspect. Tonight, however, Crow has actually said that he is convinced we will get a deer. 100 per cent. I will say one thing, I'm feeling quite confident tonight. <laughs> Come on, David. Fighting talk, but as with his pigeon shooting, he's been doing a lot of reconnaissance. So he's feeling punchy, in a good way. Make no mistake, this is shooting, not hunting this evening. This is about clearing the ground of fallow. Andy has his way, and he knows that his way works for him. Um, these deer are big problems to us here. I'm talking big problem. Just keep coming and coming and coming. Just vermin to me, really. Tonight we're, we're here just to shoot as many deer as we can. I will be head shooting them. I haven't got to worry about going over and picking them up or deer running on. It is frowned upon by some people, but either you can do it or you can't. I'm not a long range shooter, I don't boast to be, I've got nothing to prove. Um, but anything out to 100 yards, 120, 130 yards, back of the head, no trouble at all. Or the side of the head, between the eye and the ear. I never face shoot anything. If you put five bullets in the uh, side of your finger now, at 100 yards, well, you ought to be able to put that bullet in the back of the head. And when you've shot as many deer as what I have, you can read a deer when it's moving, what it's going to do, and how it's going to react. So if I didn't feel confident, I won't shoot it. So simple as. Bolts open. Max in the air. Right on cue, a fallow spiker feeds out into the crop. I can't shoot at the moment because he's his head's in arm on his back. Look at that. We could let it be for a while in the hope that others join it, but with the pressure on, we're going to take our chance. You want it? Yeah. Good day. The buck drops where it stands, just as Andy says. I was confident tonight. I've been watching them. That one come out. Right on cue, I said to David it would be. Quarter away. I've been watching them for the last four nights, so I know what time they've been coming out. Then when I did want to shoot it, it was, his head was in line with its back, so. That shot was incredibly quiet. <laughs> These silencers, they are the business, they really are. This rifle, I reckon, it makes less noise than my 1.7. Um, I really have fallen in love with this thing. Um, it's so accurate. Um, I'm so confident with it. I've shot some, a lot of foxes. I've shot a hell of a lot of deer with it too. We ask Crow why he didn't shoot the animal when its head was in line with its back. The reason I didn't shoot it there is I just didn't want the shrapnel or the bullet going back and damaging the meat. And the angle for me, I don't know about for the camera, but the angle for me, um, it would have gone back and it would have gone straight into its... Uh, any shrapnel gone out would have gone straight into the, the fillet. The best bit of the animal. And what's the point of rushing it? He, just, he was pretty going to come out here, pretty chilled out there. So just wait for him to turn his head the other way and present a decent shot. So took it. Andy has regularly seen three spikers together, so stays alert. Twenty minutes later, we have our second shooting opportunity. Andy makes no mistake. Oh, 
before anyone says anything, there's no backstop. That is a bank there, straight behind it. That is a, they come up a bank, they come down a bank. That is a solid bank there. So I know the ground. I wouldn't just shoot into into nothing. So I know the ground, and there is a bank. That is a bank. The thing is, when you head shooting like that, you you ain't got to worry where they've gone. They're down. You ain't got to think across where's that gone. You've got to track it. You've got to you've got to go down and go and track it. The first one bang down. There's no noise. You're not going over there to pick it up. Second one bangs down. Now it is just a waiting game and hope something else comes. With the light really going, Andy spots another buck in the tram lines. It's too late for the camera, but there's an outline. And there's a second one behind. It too drops on the spot. Into a good evening. Shame is Davey couldn't video it because the light had just gone, but through this scope it's just crystal clear. And he finds the deer with ease. Perfect result. After loading them onto the buggy, we're back to the yard to process the four fallow. He certainly made up for our previous adventures, which makes this evening even sweeter. Andy can now look forward to a post-harvest wind down as he embarks on some industrial scale venison burger production. For more about Andy's setup, visit gmk.co.uk.